You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information. Or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at ymca.net. The Y for a better us. Freaky Fridays with Social Claude. The gap between science, the paranormal, and spirituality is far and wide. Scientists reject what they cannot explain. Others believe without explanation. Your host, Social Claude, will bridge the gap between science, the paranormal, and spirituality. Welcome to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on KLRNRadio.com. Tonight's topic is, Why are extraterrestrial beings obsessed with our nuclear arsenal? Before I go to the main topic of tonight's broadcast, I thought it would be wise to give my listeners a little background information about myself. I've had an interesting life, throughout which there have been anomalous experiences, I have yet to decide whether or not to reveal specifics, but suffice it to say, my experiences lead me to believe in the paranormal and spirituality. Back in the earlier days of the internet, I was heavily involved with the topic of UFOs and their occupants. I ran a website to help those having encounters, which morphed into more of a commentary website. In fact, later in the show, I will be reading one of my more popular posts from that era. If you want to know more about me personally, I've been an award-winning producer of video programs for a non-profit, an award-winning jazz composer and guitarist. I'm also the co-host of Thursday night's America Off the Rails with Rick Robinson, also heard here at klrnradio.com. I've been an activist on various issues throughout my life as well. My main goal of Freaky Fridays is to inspire out-of-the-box thinking on whatever topic I illustrate. My conclusions should not necessarily be yours. Caveat emptor applies. That being said, let's begin our journey. On March 16, 1967, at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, an unidentified flying object, or UFO, shut down 10-minute man missiles. Declassified government documents and eyewitness testimony prove that this extraordinary event occurred. Apparently, the Malmstrom incident is only the tip of the proverbial iceberg. Here's a short excerpt of UFO researcher Robert Hastings speaking at the Disclosure Conference at the National Press Club on September 27, 2010. Declassified U.S. government documents and witness testimony from former or retired U.S. military personnel confirm beyond any doubt the reality of ongoing UFO incursions at nuclear weapons sites. When I say UFO, 
The witnesses have described these craft as disc-shaped or cylindrical-shaped or spherical. These objects are capable of both hovering and high-velocity flight, usually, usually completely silently. Over the past 37 years, I have personally located and interviewed more than 120 of these former or retired military personnel, all of whom report UFO incidents at one or more of the following locations. Nuclear missile sites, nuclear weapons storage areas, and nuclear weapons test sites in Nevada and the Pacific during the era of atomic atmospheric testing. The United States military and government officially still maintain that the UFO and extraterrestrial or ET presence is a figment of our imaginations. However, a de facto state of UFO ET disclosure exists now, given the whistleblower testimony and declassified official documents. Getting back to the ET's interest in our nuclear weapons, the big question is, why? Perhaps there are some clues from my past thinking and research on the matter. In 1997, I wrote an article postulating that the Roswell UFO crash or crashes were staged by the extraterrestrial or ET visitors to Earth. In retrospect, I may not necessarily still agree with everything I wrote. However, I stand by my feeling we need to focus on the big picture, if we are ever to unravel this enduring mystery of the ET presence. The big question that remains is why are they here? Roswell Revisited, We Hear But Do Not Listen, A Personal Viewpoint Part 1, Introduction As many seek to prove or disprove the 1947 Roswell UFO crash, or crashes, I continue to wonder, what does this all mean? I hope more people would be concerned with motive, intent, and a global or macro perspective on this enduring mystery. Below is, is my theory that the Roswell crash was staged by these mysterious beings. Even if the, the theory is wrong or partially correct, the main point is we must start looking for meaning. It is apparent someone is trying to say something and we continue to hear but do not listen. Before I get to my theory, some explanation of the terminology I use is in order. Additionally, some historical background may be helpful. Please excuse me if you already have studied this. It is important to reiterate to fully understand why I think what I believe. When I use the term UFO, it could be an interstellar spaceship, an interdimensional craft, some sort of time machine, or even a manifestation of human consciousness. When I use the word alien, I take a similar approach. In other words, the aliens could be extraterrestrials from another galaxy, interdimensional interlopers, time traversing humans from the future, or one possible future, or even some sort of spir spiritual manifestation. A colleague suggested that when, I, when it comes to these beings, it is like choice E on a multiple choice test all of the above. Now would be a good time for a station break. You are listening to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com. Every day, 70,000 puppies or kittens are born in the U.S. Cute, right? What's not cute is that half of all litters are accidents, which leads to millions killed in shelters each year. Turns out those little cuties can get pregnant sooner than you think. But here's the good news. You can stop the accident before it happens. When you bring home a pet, get them fixed at four months old. Prevent more. Fix at month four. Visit fixat4.com for more information. Brought to you by Best Friends Animal Society. Hi, this is Kelsey Grammer. When military service members head into battle, none are expected to face the enemy alone. But many return home and become isolated as they struggle with the visible and invisible wounds of war. It can be difficult knowing how to overcome that challenge and rekindle bonds similar to those formed in the military. Wounded Warrior Project supports these injured veterans through their recoveries by connecting them with fellow warriors and their communities. No one should fight this battle alone. Join us at WoundedWarriorProject.org. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our everyday. Some are good, 
others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. There was this one time I went camping with my parents in a forest back when I was maybe like eight or nine. It was amazing. We could hear the sounds of the forest all around us. Frogs singing and owls calling and a creek nearby. I'll definitely never forget it. Most of us have a memory of being in nature we'll never forget. Let's protect the world's natural places so more memories can be made for generations to come. Visit worldwildlife.org. Hi, this is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Every two minutes, another American is sexually assaulted. If you or someone you know has been sexually assaulted, you are not alone. Help is just a call or click away through the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Please call 1-800-656-HOPE, that's H-O-P-E, or visit RAIN.org, that's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. To be able to just get my son to St. Jude and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Welcome back to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com. Getting back to my article, Roswell Revisited. Part 2, Corso and the Crash Dummies. The event that sparked my final realization about what I believe Roswell and the prior and subsequent alien involvement on Earth means was in reading The Day After Roswell by retired Colonel U.S. Army Philip Corso. In the book, Corso maintains he was in charge of disseminating some of the artifacts from the crash retrieval of a UFO from or around Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. His task was getting this advanced technology in the hands of defense contractors and universities so they could reverse engineer and harvest miracles like the integrated circuit, fiber optics, the laser, super tenacity fibers, brand name Kevlar, and more. His involvement was in the early 60s at the Pentagon, working under General Trudeau in the Foreign Technology Section of Army Intelligence, a convenient, a convenient cover for the real work at hand for Corso. The same week in July 1997, the day after Roswell debuted, we crashed, said sarcastically, our own UFO on Mars, called NASA's Mars Pathfinder, at least from the perspective of a Martian. Corso did, did his first book signing at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, and it was the 50th anniversary of, anniversary of the Roswell incident. Interesting. Quite a week. Just two weeks prior, the U.S. Air Force came out with the laughable the Roswell dead aliens were crash dummies lie. Obviously, the UFO matter is still highly classified, and the disinformation specialists of the Air Force had to lie. However, I think it goes much deeper than that. Since the dummies were used eight years after the Roswell crash, the Air Force obviously does not want us to take them seriously, while at the same time officially maintaining the status quo of the cover-up. But the cover-up seems to be unraveling, again perhaps even by design, like the crash itself. So, we have the Looney Tunes Air Force pronouncement and Corso blowing the whistle not only about Roswell, but about the double-edged nature of the Cold War with the Soviets. Note, Corso, in my opinion, is far from a classic whistleblower because he has tacit approval from the powers that be. It appears to me some facet of the cover-up is floating a trial balloon here. Do you really think Corso would be allowed to do a book signing at an Air Force base if they wanted to silence or discredit him? Stay tuned, folks. Since, since it really looks like a major change is occurring in the way the aliens are being handled. But beware. The same folks that lied to us for 50 years are perfectly capable of putting whatever spin they want on this. 
I am reading opinions that the aliens are demons and they are hostile, etc. I do not agree. We must be vigilant against the possible new evil empire the global military industrial complex and intelligentsia so loves to cook up for us. Part 3 Ancient Astronauts and Phantom Dirigibles I have thought for some time that the one reality of the aliens is their impact. Whether or not they exist, their impact is real. Therefore, they are real. There is a message from this. I think it is, unite or perish. In other words, you, hum you humans are not the only form of intelligence on Earth, in the cosmos, or throughout the, the dimensions. Stop harming yourselves, your fellow beings, and your environment. Some would argue I am yet another victim of some form of brainwashing by evil aliens, making me think they are here to help humankind, while at the same time secretly planning the ultimate demise of humanity. As far as I am concerned, I'll stick with my assumption that at a minimum, at, that at a minimum, the aliens have a deep vested interest in us. Perhaps we are their children, left here on Earth 50,000 years ago. Maybe we are ge a genetically re-engineered native species. They could even be our children from the future. Or it just may be a spiritual connection. Or we are in their laboratory for study, like guinea pigs. Throughout our history, there appears to be a presence alongside humanity. We have all seen the strange cave paintings, artifacts, and hieroglyphs of beings in what look like space helmets. We've seen the Nazca lines at Nazca Plain, Peru, which can only be seen from the air, elves, gnomes, and pixies, which in many cases are similar to reports of aliens today, flying chariots, etc. Things get real interesting in 1896 to 18 to uh, 97 when there was an airship flap that gripped North America which became known as the Great Airship Mystery these sightings included contact with people or they were thought were people incidentally this was the first major flap in America a flap is a period or wave of high UFO sightings with reports by the press if you look at the technology used by the aliens on a timeline you will see they always seem to be one step ahead of what our minds at the time could be comfortable understanding. Airships in the 1890s, just prior to their actual use by humans. Spaceships in the late 40s, prior to our own development of space travel. Now they fly around in delta-shaped, mile-wide craft, etc. Could it also be that our perception of the aliens has been a step behind as well? During the airship flap, the aliens were looked upon as people, like they were in the Navy or something. Now we are seeing humanoid types and others. Perhaps in a hundred years, they will appear only in spiritual form once we go through the present phase. Yes, since the involvement with the aliens has been for so long, and they appear to change based on our level of development, I have concluded further change in our, in our view of them and their technology is very likely. Part 4. Weapons of Mass Destruction, the Crash, and the Common Foe To understand what follows, I have made the assumption the Roswell Crash, at its most commonly reported, was a real event. I am more than satisfied that if the events of 1947 in New Mexico went to trial, the government would be convicted of a cover-up. People have been sent to death with less evidence than there is to support the Roswell cover-up. Also, Please assume that this is a theory full of holes. As I said, the main point here is to get others to start thinking about the big picture. I really think this is the only way we will ever get close to understanding. It is now 1914. The war to end all wars, World War I, has brought humanity to a new low. Now we deploy machine guns, chemical weapons, tanks, larger than ever artillery, stealthy submarines, and more. To an observer sans human, it would seem we are in the beginning stages of what could potentially be what Star Trek referred to as the self-destructive phase. It doesn't take the proverbial rocket scientist to realize we still are in the, this awful stage of our development or lack thereof. Hopefully, people of vision will take control of Mother Earth before it is too late. At the same time, we did not have the technology to cause our own extinction, 
and our apparent vested interest in alien counterparts did not, nor could, for whatever reason, intervene. Perhaps some sort of prime directive a la Roddenberry. The prime directive was about to be violated or we triggered an exception clause. Basically, these beings have the ability to either see ahead or through technology jump ahead in time. They saw the Armageddon of thermonuclear war in our future. One of many possible futures, perhaps. Maybe they are survivors of this nuclear war. Actually, common sense would tell them, based on the horrors of the two, two world wars, that extinction was likely now that we had the bomb. Keep in mind, the airship flap of the late 19th century was, was generally benign in nature. This says an awful lot to me. If the aliens did not invade and conquer us in 1897, I don't think they were about to in 1997. Now it is 1947. The United States has atomic weapons and in two years are about to be joined by the Soviets. Soon after that, both will develop thermonuclear weapons, which make the Trinity bomb look like a firecracker. Seeing the imminent self-annihilation of humanity, something had to be done and it could not be an overt landing and contact. In 1947, it would have ripped the planet apart, as our version of reality was not ready for open and unambiguous contact with an advanced civilization. I laugh every time I see the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still, with Gort guarding Klaatu's ship in the middle of Washington, D.C. So the most incredible plan was concocted. Sheer genius. They made themselves a threat, by surveilling us near our most secret airbase, Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell was the home of the only nuclear strike force the Army Air Force had at the time. The crash was staged so we could think we could create the technology to fight these beings who are really flying around in their Model T Ford when in the garage they have a 97 Ferrari. In other words, the military would think, gee, if they can crash, we can shoot them down. Anyway, Corso validates, validates part of this by his connection between the Cold War and the real agenda of the military, to prepare for and defend for an alien invasion. I do understand it was Corso's job to be paranoid and prepare for worst-case scenarios. 1947 was the beginning of the invasion. This was the same year the Air Force branched off on its own from the Army and the CIA, CIA was formed. Interesting. If we take the 1947 invasion and subsequent DC flap of 1952, etc., it is easy to see the ETs would have been perceived as a threat. If I were alive at the time, I would have thought we were being primed for an attack. But now, 50 years later, I find this highly unlikely and hard to swallow. On this point, I feel Corso was way off. He still maintains they are a threat. There are many unanswered questions, like who, what is behind the cattle mutil mutilations, crop circles, etc. But I really think Corso has given us vital clues as to the last 50 years, way behind the scenes collaboration between the US and Soviets, and the potential that this was caused by the aliens giving us a co common enemy to defend against. I'll mention a very interesting clue. President Reagan's SDI, or Strategic Defense Initiative, a.k.a. Star Wars. This was the anti-ballistic missile umbrella that would shoot down missiles from space, and if that failed, blast the incoming warheads with laser or particle beam weapons. This clearly violated the anti-ballistic missile treaty with the Soviets. We never heard even the sound of a pin dropping out of the Kremlin on this. Another interesting facet is the Internet was created as a direct result of having to re-engineer and harvest the alien technology. The precursor to the net was ARPANET, for ARPA, Advanced Research Projects Agency, to communicate freely and securely with the researchers and defense industry subcontractors. Funny thing is, the Internet, created by the secret keepers, is the primary medium by which we are letting the cat out of the proverbial bag. Poetic justice? Or by design? It appears the secret keepers are in the dark themselves. Okay, that's the end of my article. Now here we are today, 2017, and as much 
as many wanted the United States government to come clean on the UFO matter, they have not. Perhaps this is not such a bad thing anyway. The government seems to botch anything they get their hands on. Getting back to the topic at hand, let's explore further why are the extraterrestrial beings obsessed with our nuclear arsenal. I shall now attempt to think like an ET, one that has been stationed near Earth to monitor and guide our progress or lack thereof, and potentially intervene under extraordinary circumstances. This is ET Social Claude speaking now. We have been with humanity from the beginning. In 1945, your species exploded its first nuclear weapon. Subsequent to that weapon test, we ratcheted up our monitoring of nuclear weapon testing, storage, and military bases poised to use said weapons. We've also demonstrated to your military that at our discretion, we can disable your nuclear weapons before they are launched. We can also easily disable your missiles in flight, rendering their, rendering their payload inert. Why are we doing this? We are demonstrating our capabilities to let humanity know that we will not let you annihilate yourself in a nuclear war. Okay, now back to your host, the human social clod. Back when the latest kerfuffle between the United States and North Korea happened, I thought to myself, there is an ace in the hole for humanity. Our ET visitors will intervene since they've demonstrated the ability to render our nuclear weapons harmless. Obviously, Star Trek is fiction, but this intervention would violate the prime directive of not interfering with pre-warp drive civilizations. Thankfully, Star Trek is fiction. I would support the ETs preventing a nuclear holocaust. There are way too many innocents on Earth who have no say, like our animal cousins. I also believe the ancient aliens' proponents' theory that our species is a hybrid of human and alien DNA. Therefore, our progenitor alien great-great-great-great-grandparents' offspring certainly have a say now in the outcome of the fate of their offspring, and the planet that supports their lives as well. I know that is a lot to think about, so I'll give you your minds a rest and play some of my music. Following my music in the station break, I will switch to another topic, which will come in very handy when delving into some of the issues we share an interest in. You are listening to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com.
The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. So can you. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. There's a threat targeting America. Lyme disease. Spread by tiny ticks, this dangerous disease can cause life-changing health problems and is now more widespread than West Nile tuberculosis and HIV AIDS combined. So it's time for us to target Lyme disease. That means checking for ticks when you've been outside and seeing a doctor if you experience the warning signs, which can include joint pain and flu-like symptoms. Learn how you can target Lyme disease at TargetLyme.org. Think fast. In the short time it takes to listen to this message, a small flame can turn into a big fire. Several minutes more, and thick, poisonous smoke may have filled your lungs and reduced your ability to respond. Give it five, and your entire home may be filled with flames. Keep breathing. We've got you. Don't let your world go up in smoke. Have working smoke alarms and always stay in the kitchen when cooking at high temperatures. Learn more at usfa.fema.gov, because fire is everyone's fight. Having a place to go after school will make you a better student. Having an outlet to express yourself will make you a better artist. Having something to do together will make you a better family. At The Y, we're helping build better friends, listeners, writers, swimmers, scientists, and musicians one chance at a time. Get the gift of opportunity. Support The Y at ymca.net. The Y for a better us. This is a message from CDC. It's natural to worry and feel stressed during and after disasters. Everyone reacts differently, and your feelings will change throughout the emergency. Notice and accept your feelings. Take care of your emotional health during an emergency so you can think clearly and protect yourself and your family. Self-care during emergencies will help your long-term healing. Watch for these common signs of distress. Feelings of fear or anxiety. Changes in energy and activity levels. Difficulty concentrating, eating, or sleeping. Nightmares. Headaches, body pains, stomach problems, or skin rashes. Changes in alcohol, tobacco, or other drug use. Anger or short temper. If you experience any of these and are unable to carry out normal responsibilities because of them, get professional help. For more information, visit cdc.gov or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. Welcome back to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com. It's a pleasure to be your host for tonight's show. I appreciate my listeners' time very much indeed. There are a few topics as controversial as the UFO ET matter, which is the main subject of tonight's broadcast. It doesn't help when profiteers, nutcases, and rabbit skeptics, as opposed to healthy skeptics, muddy the waters of truth. When delving into difficult and contentious topics, putting on your truth discernment cap is highly beneficial. Here are my top 10 truth discernment tips. As a truth seeker, you should consider that. Number one, your known preconceived bias needs to be embraced, not ignored. Fear of discovering that your bias might be wrong is never a good place to start the journey towards truth. Number two, Remain open to change your bias. This makes you a better person, decision maker, and citizen. Number three, some of your bias may be subconscious and hardwired, difficult and even painful, yet not impossible, to ferret out of the thought process. Number four, after going through the discernment process, you may be upset when you discover your bias to no, no longer be truth. Learn to get over this and the mental anguish lessens with time. Number five, broaden your sources of information. The government corporate media complex should never be your only source of knowledge. Use alternative media such as blogs and independent websites. Number six, controversial subjects and or issues with financial and or politi political ramifications tend to contain proportionally more mistruths than their non-controversial counterparts. Number seven, 
all sources of information contained in varying degrees an amalgam of truth, partial truth, misinformation, and disinformation. Number 8. When a new study is cited in the media, ask yourself, what is to be gained politically and or financially by the results and con conclusions of the study? Number 9. Dig deep and find out who or what groups fund the study. The funding sources create an inherent bias in the conclusions of the study. This is true because those doing the study do not wish to bite the hand that feeds by disagreeing with the bias of their gravy train. Number 10. Look beyond the names of groups pushing an agenda. Frequently, groups will pick names for themselves that are the opposite of their actual intent or mask their true motivation. That's the end of my top 10 list. A while back, I was watching some either foolish or disingenuous talking head interview someone representing a group against online gambling. A quick look at the website for the group showed me their funding came mainly from the brick-and-mortar casino industry. Funny how the talking head did not bother to divulge this wee little tidbit. After practicing truth discernment over many years, I have found that in this instance, I just knew the casino industry was behind this group prior to even verifying. I asked myself, who would have an axe to grind? And behold, there they were. The media and our so-called leaders bank on a mentally lazy populace who lap up whatever is dished out like pablum. Don't be a mental infant. When evaluating decisions such as what to believe or who to vote for, using truth discernment sure comes in handy. If more people practice truth discernment, the world would be a much better place. Our leaders would be forced to govern more wisely with an enlightened populace they had to answer to. I think it's time to interject some humor into tonight's serious broadcast. Anyone who follows me on Twitter, I go by Social Claude there, knows I have a love for cats. I find refuge in their unconditional love and companionship. I wish more people were like cats. Here is my top 10 reasons your house cat is better off than you are. Your happy house cat, number one can take frequent blissful naps anywhere, on the windowsill, under the bed, in the closet, on your favorite chair, etc. Number two, can engage in guilt-free meat eating. Number three, has a built-in purr box requiring only occasional maintenance in the form of petting and your attention. Number four, can totally ignore the need to eat veggies, including the dreaded Brussels sprout. Has anyone ever spotted an adult Brussels, or they, or are they legendary like the Loch Ness monster? Number five, can hunt mice without the fear that some animal rights group will create an ad campaign of naked Hollywood celebrities pr promoting beer drinking, beer drinking on college campuses. Number six, frequently gets a warmer greeting than you do from your human home visitors. Number seven has erotica that, that won't make them go blind in the form of watching the birdies and squirrels outside the window through their comfy window perch. Number eight, can take what we consider recyclable garbage, like a paper shopping bag or cardboard shipping box, and will create a mansion to snooze in, snooze in out of the refuse. Number nine, can enjoy savory, oily, kitty dry food crunchies as opposed to the baked, dry as the bloody Sahara Desert, non-savory cardboard snacks your physician recommends. Number 10. Is thought of as cool by default, without the need to know the latest handshake or who, what, a Lady Gaga is. Now you know some re reasons why I love cats. They certainly are better off than most of their human companions. We're out of time for this segment. When we return, I'll have my closing thoughts for tonight's show. Thank you. You are listening to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com.
You might be surprised to learn who has Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Nearly 1 in 200 Americans are suffering with a debilitating pain and constant disruption of these inflammatory bowel diseases, or IBD. Chances are you know someone with IBD. For example, your neighbor or coworker. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation was created to help patients cope and to find a cure. People with IBD can't wait. Won't you help someone you know? Visit www.escapethestall.com today. The fighting spirit of the Marine Corps is born of battles won. Battles won within. Over enemies of fear. Enemies of doubt. It's who we are. It's what we do. It's a promise made to you for more than two centuries. A promise of the Marines. Hello, I'm Social Claude, the outspoken host of Freaky Fridays with Social Claude and co-host of America Off the Rails with Rick Robinson. Both shows are on klrnradio.com. I'm also a prolific meme creator on Twitter. Being controversial can make it hard for people to earn a living. Fortunately now, there is Patreon, a place where creators like me can find support from like-minded patrons. Please take a moment to search for my Social Claude page on Patreon. You'll find a short video and more information about me. Patreon plans start at only $5 per month, or around 16 cents a day. With your help, I can continue to innovate and create, without the fear of censorship from traditional employers. Thank you for your time, and thank you for supporting Social Claude on Patreon. This weather is amazing. I love being outside. Last time I mowed the lawn, I got burned. Ouch, you've got to watch out for too much sun. Anytime you tan or burn, you've increased your risk of skin cancer. What are you talking about? Anytime your skin changes color after sun exposure, you've increased your risk of skin cancer. Really? Yes, the next time you're out, plan ahead. Wear long sleeves if you can, or at least a shirt. Then use a broad-spectrum sunscreen of SPF 15 or higher, anywhere that's not covered. And don't forget a wide-brimmed hat. A wide-brimmed hat? Seriously? Yeah, it'll keep the sun off your ears and neck. But if you do wear a ball cap, make sure you've got sunscreen on exposed skin. Okay, now I know. I'll start planning to protect my skin every time I'm outside. Learn more at cdc.gov cancer. Welcome back to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com. Since one of the topics I want to broach on Freaky Fridays is spirituality, I thought I would end tonight's episode on that topic. And I just so happen to have a top 10 principles on inner workings of our spiritual path. Ask yourself this question. In this life, is my path preordained? Answer, yes and no. Life, a component of your spiritual path, is like a Broadway musical. Life has a plot and script where the actors inevitably flub their lines or lyrics. But the show must go on, and in the end, the audience is none the wiser about mistakes. In essence, life is organized chaos. We are born onto this earth to experience certain things, but have some freedom about how they manifest. If you fall too far from your path, guidance will come into play. A topic for a future broadcast. Bottom line. You are here on this earth to experience and do certain things. And even if you stray off your path, or free will, tributaries are in place to ultimately bring you to the same destination. Your agreed upon or preordained path. We also get help to find our spiritual path and to stay relatively on course. This is my current best intuitive and logical assessment. Top 10 Principles, Inner Workings of Our Spiritual Path Number 1. There is an eternal pre- and post-physical life, usually called death or the afterlife. A clue to how we live for eternity is found in Energy can be neither created nor destroyed, from the law of conservation of energy. We just are, have been, and always will be. Number 2. 
There are many physical lives or reincarnation. Number three, during the pre and post period in between lives, you and your spiritual mentors agree upon what you will experience in the next life. Number four, most memory of this agreement is wiped away at birth, albeit we sometimes get glimpses. A mystic is one who retains these types of memories. Number five, think of life as a chance to learn or experience something. This can include learning what it feels like to help a person or a pet animal in need. Number six, our spiritual lessons also include the consequences of harming others. Note, I have yet to get my physical mind around this prospect, but spiritually I know it's true. Number seven, when we harm one another, we may also experience what it feels like to be harmed in a similar manner in the same or future physical life. This is sometimes called karma. Number eight, when you are born, you gravitate towards your path with occasional outside nudging from your spiritual mentors. Number nine, if you stray too far off your path, the nudging gets stronger, including and up to near-death experiences. Number 10. Many times our spiritual mentors work via surrogates who may be unaware that they were guided to help you. We may also be guided to help other people and the interactions can create benefits both ways. That's the end of my top 10 list. If there are actual rules or laws governing how this all works, they are yet to be defined by science. How could such a seemingly infinite and complex system of quasi-preordained outcomes involving gazillions of beings throughout the cosmos be possible? I think we are dealing with what many people consider the divine, or perhaps a super sophisticated computer simulation that makes the National Security Agency's computer system look like an abacus. Whatever it is, try to enjoy this grand musical. I'll finish up with some more of my music. It's been a pleasure sharing some of my thoughts with you. Please join me next week at midnight Eastern. Freaky Fridays is also archived at klrnradio.com. So no worries if you want to listen again. I've given you a boatload to think about for sure. To stay updated, please, please follow Social Claude on Twitter. If you want to support me financially, I'm also on Patreon as Social Claude. My goal is to be a, as listener-supported as possible. Good night. You have been listening to Freaky Fridays with Social Claude on klrnradio.com. <laughs>